From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! The firing of, of, uh, of uh, Mr. Gelbert was uh, on some, some technical issues. I, I have no say in it. Uh, if the issue was uh, based on the fact that uh, uh, he was for vigorous look into the issue of fraud, uh, he was, uh, uh, in that case, I, I will say that he has been talking on behalf of the people of Afghanistan. The leading opposition candidate in Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah, he's talking about the firing of Peter Galbraith, the top American diplomat at the United Nations in Afghanistan. Galbraith was fired after he wrote a scathing letter to the U.N. Secretary General accusing his boss at the U.N. mission in Afghanistan, the Norwegian diplomat Kai Eide, of helping cover up electoral fraud and being biased in favor of Hamid Karzai. Well, Peter Galbraith will join us from Norway, then under siege. We go to Honduras to speak with the Austin Honduran President Manuel Zelaya from inside the Brazilian Embassy in Tegucigalpa. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. U.S. and Afghan forces have launched an assault against a group of Taliban in eastern Afghanistan following one of the deadliest days for U.S. troops since the war began. On Saturday morning, 300 guerrilla fighters attacked a U.S. outpost near the Pakistan border. During a day-long clash, eight U.S. troops and two Afghan police officers died. A number of Afghan police officers are missing and feared captured. The attack occurred at an outpost that U.S. commanders had been planning to abandon as part of a new strategy to withdraw from sparsely populated areas where the United States lacks the troops to expel Taliban forces. In Pakistan, at least four people have died after a suicide bomber targeted the U.N. World Food Program office in Islamabad. The World Food Program said three of its staff members have been confirmed dead and several others have been injured. Two were in critical condition. U.N. Chief Ban Ki-moon condemned the attack as a heinous crime. In economic news, the nation's official unemployment rate rose to 9.8 percent last month. The Labor Department said 263,000 jobs were eliminated in September, bringing the total number of workers unemployed to 15 million. Another 9 million people have been relegated to part-time work because their employers had scaled back their hours or they simply could not find full-time jobs. The unemployment rate has doubled since December 2007. This is economist Mark Vintner. Not only did we have a larger than expected decline in non-farm payrolls, but it was incredibly broad-based. And you have to, to really comb through this report to find anything uh, to be optimistic about. I mean some economists say the job picture may be even more dire because of shortcomings with the government's model for calculating payrolls. On Friday, the Labor Department announced that it severely underestimated the number of jobs lost between March 2008 and March 2009. The department had originally said about 4.8 million jobs were eliminated during that period, but now officials admit an additional 824,000 jobs were lost. Meanwhile, consumer bankruptcy soared 41 percent in September from a year before. Nearly 125,000 people filed for bankruptcy last month, the fourth highest month since the bankruptcy law changed in 2005. President Barack Obama's climate czar, Carol Browner, said Friday, there is no way Congress will be able to pass a bill on climate change before the climate talks in Copenhagen in December. Browner was asked about climate legislation during a forum Friday organized by The Atlantic magazine. What do you expect Congress to give you, if anything, to bring to Copenhagen in December? Well, obviously, we'd like to be, you know, through the process, that's not going to happen. I think we would all agree the likely that you'd have a bill signed by the president, comprehensive energy, by the time we go early in December. It's not likely. Uh, but we could be out of committee, certainly, in the Senate. We could uh, perhaps be headed to the floor. There could be a leadership uh, bill out there. You know, we will go to Copenhagen, manage with whatever we have. The Iranian government has said it will allow U.N. inspectors access to a newly disclosed nuclear enrichment facility on October 25th. The announcement comes just days after Iran held talks with the U.S. and other world powers. Mohammad al-Baradai, the director general of the International Atomic Energy Agency, praised Iran for moving forward on agreements reached at last week's meeting. It is important for us uh, to uh, send our inspectors to do a comprehensive verification of that facility to assure ourselves 
that it is a, a facility that's built for peaceful purposes, that uh, we understand its relationship to the Iran uh, nuclear program, its capacity, and many other, many other technical uh, questions that our inspectors would be interested in, in getting answers to. In Washington, Susan Rice, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, said intense negotiations are taking place with Iran, but she acknowledged a new round of sanctions is still on the table. There are a range of, of sanctions, David, under consideration. Uh, there are those that we might pursue multilaterally in the context of the Security Council. There are others that we could do outside of the Security Council with partners in Europe and elsewhere. Uh, and then there are those that we can take by ourselves unilaterally. There's a wide range. Economic uh, sanctions? E e economic and otherwise. Um, but th that is uh, one option. But right now we are uh, in a period of intense negotiations. It's not an infinite period. It's a very finite period. In other Iran news, National Security Advisor James Jones has publicly disputed a front-page New York Times article that claims Iran knows how to make a nuclear bomb. The Times based its article on an alleged secret IAEA report that says Iran has, quote, sufficient information to be able to design and produce a workable atom bomb. On Sunday, Jones said, quote, we stand by the reports that we've put out, unquote. Two years ago, the U.S. released a report suggesting that Iran has stopped work on its nuclear weapons program in 2003. The New York Times based its article not on the actual IAEA report, but on conversations with European officials who claim to have seen the secret document. The International Olympic Committee has voted to hold the 2016 Olympics in the Brazilian city of Rio de Janeiro. Rio has, will become the first South American Olympic host. Rio is considered to be one of the world's most dangerous cities and is a notoriously corrupt police force. Over 2,000 murders were reported in the city last year. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, the Rio police committed one in five of the murders. Executions by police death squads are considered common. On July 30th, police officers in Rio were charged with homicide after an investigation that implicated them in the formation of a death squad and unlawful killings. In news from Europe, socialists won national elections in Greece Sunday, trouncing the center-right government. The socialists won 44 percent of the vote in their largest victory ever. The Palestinian Authority is being denounced for agreeing to defer a vote in the U.N. Human Rights Council on the Goldstone Report, which criticized Israeli troops for targeting and terrorizing civilians during the assault on Gaza. The Palestinian Authority made the decision after Secretary of State Hillary Clinton called Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to encourage him to withdraw support for the report. The vote would have forwarded the Goldstone Report to the U.N. Security Council, which in turn could have referred Israel to the International Criminal Court. The Palestinian Authority has been widely criticized by many Palestinian leaders and the families of the victims of the Gaza assault. Palestinian Economy Minister Bassem Khoury resigned Saturday to protest the Palestinian Authority's decision. This is independent Palestinian lawmaker Mustafa Barghouti. It is totally unjustified. It is frustrating and disappointing. There was a majority in the Council of Human Rights that would have approved this report. This report would have finally uh, took away the feeling of impunity and uh, of Israel in front of international law and would have held the Israeli establishment accountable for the war crimes that took place in Gaza. Bill Van Esveld of Human Rights Watch criticized the Obama administration's actions. Due to American pressure, strong pressure from Washington, uh, the Palestinians have withdrawn their request that the UN act on the Goldstone Report. What the US has effectively done is sent a strong signal that Israel doesn't need to investigate itself because that was the recommendation of the Goldstone Report. In other news, the Israeli newspaper Haaretz reports Israel's Vice Prime Minister Moshe Alon recently canceled a planned trip to Britain for fear of being arrested there. Alon is the former chief of staff of the Israel Defense Forces. He's one of several current and former senior Israeli officers whom pro-Palestinian groups have sought to put on trial over the assassination of senior Hamas commander Salah Shahada in 2002. The attack also killed 14 civilians. The Financial Times reports Goldman Sachs stands to receive a payment of one billion.